Dividend paying companies can be traps, but there are 10 signs you can use to protect yourself. If you want to improve your knowledge of stock market investing, welcome to this stock market analysis video on dividends. By the end of this video, you will understand the risks of dividend investing, signs of dividend safety or that a dividend is unsafe, and the dangers of companies paying a dividend. This video builds on our prior episode on dividends, so if you have not watched it yet, click the link to the video at the top of the screen to watch it first. In our last video, I started off showing you this chart. We learned how this chart demonstrated the importance of investing in dividend growth companies over those who did not pay a dividend. It seems straightforward, but there is more for us to cover. One category I left for this video was the last category, dividend cutters and eliminators. Look at this category. It was the absolute worst. Not only did it not have the gains of the other categories, it lost money. You could have initially invested $100 in dividend paying companies, but they cut or eliminated their dividends and you waited 45 years to lose $15 of your $100. I showed you this chart as well. Note that the dividend cutters averaged 1.6% from over 33 years. 1.6% sounds like almost nothing, until you realize that inflation during that period averaged just over 3%. In actuality, 1.6% is worse than nothing. You would have lost buying power with those investments, even though the companies were paying dividends when you bought them. Dividend stocks can have a host of dangers we need to be aware of. Companies can and do cut dividends, especially in periods like our current situation in April of 2020. Many companies over the last several weeks have suspended or cut their dividends. Energy, financial, retail, and travel-related companies like Carnival Corporation, L Brands, Gap, Texas Roadhouse, Nordstrom, Macy's, Marriott, Ford, and Delta Airlines have done so at higher rates. Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust cut its dividend by 90% on March 31st, and New Residential Investment Corporation cut its dividend by 90% on March 31st. For those who are interested in where this information came from, the links for this information are in the video description below. Before I explain the risks, how to identify them, and what we can do to avoid them, please take a moment to like this video. Videos like this take a great deal of time to create, and liking this video will help the YouTube algorithm get this video out to more people who are interested. Why does cutting or eliminating a dividend give such bad results? In most cases, the dividend cut is not the primary cause of the poor returns. The dividend cut is a symptom of underlying problems with the company. If a company has to reduce or eliminate its dividend, it is because the company is financially unhealthy. Companies do not reduce or eliminate a dividend without reason. In most cases, a company who cuts the dividend has falling revenue, earnings, and cash flow, has taken on too much debt, is struggling to cover its costs, and may even be on the verge of bankruptcy. Dividends themselves can contribute to this. If a company puts all of its earnings toward dividend payments, it may neglect to reinvest money back into the company. Research and development, company expansion, and profit growth may suffer. Some companies will take out more and more debt while still paying a dividend and increasing it. As the debt compounds and the company pays out more in dividends, it may be left with nothing in cash reserves. Worse still, as those financial problems increase, the company's credit rating may be downgraded. If this occurs, the company will have even higher interest rates on debt they take out to keep the company afloat, or it may not even be able to get additional loans at all. In such cases, if there is an economic downturn or something unforeseen occurs, which hurts the company's earnings more, the company may suddenly find itself unable to pay the dividend or the massive debt which has been compounding. Thus, when the company cuts its dividend, sending share price even further down, the lack of a dividend is just the tip of the iceberg. New investors may find a company like this, see a high dividend yield, and invest immediately without any further research or understanding. This is dangerous. We refer to this as chasing yield. When you see a yield of 10%, you should be very wary. In nearly all cases, this is what we call a dividend trap. Often a high dividend yield is not an indication that the company has been raising the dividend and is a great growth company. Typically, the yield is high because the share price is rapidly falling because investors fear the company's future is in jeopardy. A company's yield may go from 4 to 8% because it increased the dividend payments by 100%. What is more likely when there is a jump like this is that the company's share price was cut in half. This is a red flag. You want to carefully assess any company you invest in. 
What is the highest dividend yield for a company you feel comfortable investing in? Leave a comment below with your thoughts. We are not looking for the companies with the highest dividends. We are looking for high quality companies with safe and growing dividends. How do we separate the safe versus the risky dividend companies? I will show you with 10 metrics, all of which you want to know. Pay close attention because I will put your knowledge to the test at the end of this video. Number one, dividend coverage. You want to ensure that the company has enough money to pay for the dividend it is paying out to shareholders. If it doesn't, there is a high likelihood the company will have to cut the dividend and it is in poor financial health. Free cash flow is used to pay out dividends. Let's use Visa as an example. When we look at fast graphs for Visa, we see this white line which shows dividends and the dark green section which shows the free cash flow. The white line is much lower than the dark green showing it is well covered. Last quarter, the free cash flow was $5.29 per share while the dividend was only $1 per share. Next quarter is only a projection based on analyst predictions and this may change. However, the expectation is a dividend of $1.20, which is only 22.7% of their free cash flow available. This indicates the dividend is well covered. Next, we look at dividend growth. Typically, if a company is growing their dividend and paying more and more every year, it's because they are financially healthy and are far from cutting or eliminating the dividend. Companies which are growing the dividend rapidly are highly unlikely to cut it. When we look at the dividend growth for Visa, we see that since 2008, it has increased its dividends by an average of 50.6% or a compound annual growth rate of 39%. Just last year, they increased the dividend by 21.2%. Again, this company looks like it is not in any danger of cutting their dividend. Third, we look at the company's growth for earnings and free cash flow, both historical and projected. A company that is not growing its cash flow can't grow its dividend indefinitely. We want a company that is doing well and growing. When we switch back to Visa's free cash flow, we can see free cash flow has grown at an average rate of 34% since 2008. Although there have been a few down years, it has never put the dividend in jeopardy. A 34% growth rate is excellent and explains their ability to grow their dividend so rapidly. Analysts are further expecting another 18% in 2021. Looking at adjusted operating earnings, we see that they have a 21% historical growth rate with expected increases of 21% in 2021 and 17% in 2022. Again, this looks healthy and our dividend looks safe. Fourth, we are looking at an S&P Global report from the CompuStat company which is found on Fidelity. The report shows that the debt interest coverage is 25.8 times. Interest coverage compares the company's earnings to the interest expense for debt. You want at least two times coverage to ensure the company can pay the debt. Visa's nearly 26 times is excellent and far exceeds the minimum. We can also look at the debt to equity assets and capital ratios here on Fidelity.com's website. They are showing us it is relatively low and manageable and is around the 44th to 53rd percentile for the IT services industry average. This again suggests safety. Sixth, we are going back to fast graphs and looking at the company's credit rating. If you have had your credit checked, you know you're hoping for a high number, such as a 740 to 850. Your credit rating shows your credit worthiness as a borrower. Companies have the same thing, but it is categorized differently and is based on different metrics. Standard & Poor's has a credit rating ranging from AAA, which is excellent, to a C or a D. A company with a rating below BB is considered to be a speculative grade or a junk bond, which means it is more likely to default on loans. Visa's credit rating is a AA-, which is better than the BB cutoff and considered investment grade. This can give us more confidence in the company. Seventh, we look at the company's performance during prior recessions. Did they collapse? Did they cut the dividend? Did they scarcely take a hit or rebound? For this, we look at other companies because Visa did not become public until 2008. We therefore do not have the ability to see its response to receptions like we can for companies with longer histories. Instead, we are looking at General Mills. The gray areas on the chart show recessions. The first one here is 2001, when the dot-com bubble burst. The black line is the price per share. The section in red is what I've selected for analysis. 
During the recession, rather than drop, General Mills' share price actually increased by 32%. Earnings in dark green declined, but only slightly, and it quickly recovered. Next, we see the financial crisis, or the Great Recession for 2008 up through 2009. I selected the beginning to the end of the gray recession period in red. Although the price initially rose before dropping and quickly coming back up, overall during that period the share price rose 5.2% and it continued to pay its dividend which remained well covered by earnings which actually increased throughout that entire period. Unsurprisingly in the recent crisis, it is performing well once more. Earnings continue to rise, the dividend remains well covered, and the share price has actually grown almost 16% in 2020 alone. For comparison, let's do the same thing with Macy's. After the dot-com bubble burst, we see share price drop 23.5% with a slight decline in earnings. Macy's was not paying a dividend at that time. When the financial crisis in 2008 hit, Share price plunged, ending the recession down over 60%, although you can see it was even lower for periods of that recession. Earnings declined steeply by 9 and then 41%. And Macy's cut its dividend, as shown by this white line decreasing. A prior dividend cut is not a good sign. Finally, we see the recent crisis selected. The share price has dropped 70% in 2020. The dividend has now been cut. Earnings dropped precipitously, declining by 30%, with an expected decline of 71%. If you look at Macy's free cash flow here, money they would have needed to cover the dividend, you see the dividend would have taken 100% of the free cash flow available to the company if they had not suspended the dividend. Consider this. If you had bought Macy's in 1999, 20 years later you would have lost money. Thanks to the dividend, your total loss would have only been 3.7%. Spending 20 years to lose 3.7% plus additional loss through inflation is not the way we want to invest money. Number 8. We also want to consider industry cyclicality. Look at General Mills' earnings. Smooth and steady. It turns out people consistently want to eat cereal, pasta, pizza, snacks, soups, and other General Mills products. Retail for Macy's was not nearly as smooth. Exxon's earnings are even more cyclical, with earnings leaping and diving as supply and demand rapidly shifts globally. You can see that the dividend has continued to grow slowly and consistently throughout this period, but certainly the changes in earnings and free cash flow raise some concerns for investors and should give you something to consider. Number 9. Another consideration is dividend longevity. How long has the company paid the dividend and how long has it grown for? Let's take a look at Realty Income. On their website, they have an Excel sheet which lists all their dividend payments. For visual effect, I am showing you the 310 consecutive monthly payments Realty Income has made since it went public in 1994. However, they have made 596 consecutive monthly dividend payments in total, with 90 consecutive quarterly increases to the dividend. In other words, they have paid a monthly dividend every month for almost 50 years almost 26 years of which was as a public company. Given they have paid a dividend every month for 596 months, do you believe that they will pay the 597th month? This is the sort of confidence we can have in a company with this longevity. Finally, consider company values, culture, and commitment to dividends. For a company like Realty Income, this is easy to find. As I mentioned, I found an Excel sheet on their website listing each of their last 310 dividend payments. The fact Realty Income has this on their website should tell you something about their values and commitment to dividends. Let's look at their homepage at their motto. They are the monthly dividend company. They're a real estate company, but is their first tab on their homepage real estate? No, it is investors. What pops up in the middle of their screen? The fact they have paid out $6.5 billion in monthly dividends. I scroll down to the bottom of the home page and the first section lists their monthly dividend stats. It isn't until the second section that they actually mention their real estate portfolio. What does this tell you about the company's interest in and emphasis for dividends? A company like this gives us great confidence in their value for and focus on dividends. Now let's test your knowledge. Look at this mystery company here. Would you invest in it? Does the dividend seem safe? Pause this video here and take a moment to decide for yourself because in a few seconds I will tell you my own thoughts. Alright, now here is my answer. The mystery company is one I mentioned earlier in the video. 
is Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust, a company that just cut its dividend by 90%. What are some red flags looking only at this page? Well, the dividend yield is listed at 91%. The growth rate since 2007 has been about negative 9%. It does not have a credit rating. The funds from operations are cyclical and have been dropping. The company already cut its dividend by 67.5% in 2009 and 18.9% in 2010 and has not raised the dividend since 2015. If you decided you did not want to invest in this company, you are a fast learner and you understand the 10 things to look for when deciding if a company and its dividends are safe. I hope you feel better educated on dividends and you enjoyed watching. I encourage everyone to subscribe to this channel because I am creating new videos every week. If you intend to invest in the stock market, you won't want to miss this important information. As always, good luck with your investing.